Give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. Cause I got the wind in my hair and a fire within and the crushing darkness of the human soul. I suppose there's no bigger indication that Tangled is going to be in the next Kingdom Hearts game than the fact that the new Tangled series keeps bounding back and forth between happiness and angst, a trend that has been plaguing modern cartoons for the last few years but happened with Tangled in record time. So let's go back over the hot mess that was Tangled the series and look at the top five best and worst episodes of the first season. Hope you brought your black eyeliner, kids. Listen up, if you please, listen to my mouth. As I've said before, Tangled surprises me with its musical numbers when it really shouldn't, but I put that down to Friendship is Magic being so liberal with every half-finished idea it has that the good musical numbers are notable by their existence. To that end, The Wrath of Ruthless Ruth has the best musical number of the season attached to a cute little mystery surrounding a wraith haunting the snuggly duckling and Cassandra's father being an idiot in the most hilarious fashion possible. A lovely example of Rapunzel's compassion even for someone who has been dead for years. And maybe you're right to have doubts in me. Not everyone has to like everyone is already a terrible lesson to kids, but when the everyone in question is some guy who's just really salty that traditions have grown obsolete, you've basically fucked up on two levels. Usually these kind of episodes of children's shows have the guest of the day be some boring non-character who you're not supposed to miss, but this time they chose a bitter curmudgeon clinging to that's the way it's always been as his rationale for not liking Rapunzel. Conservatism is not something that breeds sympathy, especially when in 2018 it's the go-to villain for the dystopia genre. This is life after happily Max was always something of a meme horse, and now the meme horse has gotten so big for his britches that we need a bigger meme horse to knock him down a peg. Surprise! It's an evil meme horse working for the lady thief! Okay, what were they smoking when writing this, and can I please have some? Honestly, this episode deserves praise just for bringing back Lady Kane. After the end of the season tried to position Varian as a villain, Lady Kane was a breath of retroactively fresh air, what with her adorably hammy presentation and the way Rapunzel fucking Looney Tunes her out of her offer to Max. It's especially ironic because Lady Kane has an actual reason to hate the monarchy, unlike Varian, but they play her as a completely straight Lady Eugene. Also, Max is sad, and that makes me sad. Locked inside a tower. Kept behind a wall. The quest for Varian is the two towers of Tangled. It's the middle. It has neither a beginning nor an end. It's all set up and no payoff, and just ends up wasting people's fucking time. See, there's an irony in that the quest for Varian could have been interesting, but the episode wastes the vast majority of its runtime on explaining the Black Rocks, showing that the king lied, and that inevitable chase scene going to the tower and destroying it. This is an episode built out of set pieces and could have very easily been so much better if they didn't keep wasting people's fucking time. Right from the start, we know that Rapunzel's gonna learn that her father lied to her, so Everything in between that is just padding. Questions are presented, but don't get answered until later episodes. Want to know how Rapunzel reacts to finding out that her father lied to her? Keep watching and maybe you'll find out. Want to know what the prophecy is? Keep watching and maybe you'll find out. Want to know what Varian is planning? Keep watching and maybe you'll find out. It's like a perfect storm of slow. Don't be shy! Let it fly! Be <laughs> shy! That's it! Game! How did Not in the Mood make it through the vetting process? In the midst of multiple episodes in a row where everything is super ethereal, this delightful cascade of incompetence jumped up and yelled, Look at me, I'm fun! Maybe somewhere in the cold, blackened heart that is the executive producer lives some sliver of his soul that hasn't been taken over by the fun police. Hey. Well. This episode starts with a babu, and that's where the good things end. Queen for a Day was the tipping point of angst that hit Tangled very hard in its first season, and it's responsible for most of the series' issues. Queen for a Day is the episode where Varian completely destroys his own life out of an inability to follow simple instructions, and the pieces start to be laid for the big mystery the show likes to pretend that it has. The only really big gut-punching moment is a fake-out, and I find it hard to believe that anybody who is willing to watch a critical analysis of Tangled is somebody who thinks Varian is anything but an annoying pustule after this episode. But I got the wind in my hair. It wouldn't be a Lily Pete top five without me cooing about baboos, so Tangle provided an episode where Eugene and Lance adopt two adorable baboos and try to put them on the path to being law-abiding citizens of the kingdom. Look at them. Look at their precious little faces, and their little shits on top of it, and Eugene is being such a dad. Look at them. Look at them. They're such a happy family. Adopt them, Eugene. Don't toy with my emotions like this. I know that I've disappointed you. 
Way of the Willow cemented something in my mind that the Pokemon series has been drilling into my head since Diamond and Pearl. Annoying the viewer is a cardinal sin. You can have all the great ideas and character work in the world, but if you're constantly tucking on the viewer's sleeve and nagging them with annoying bullshit, then all those redeeming qualities are going to be for naught. I'm sure there was a plot somewhere in Way of the Willow, but I honestly can't remember what with Willow hogging so much screen time and generally being as pleasant as a Kandiru infestation. Maybe the umlaut would be enjoyable if she didn't have the most shrill bell imaginable that she has to keep shaking or else she'll have a meltdown. This was giving me flashbacks to when I was a counselor, and not the fun flashbacks where the counselors who were jerks kept getting bitten by the kids and I would point and laugh. The bad flashbacks where I'd have to explain to a parent why slapping an autistic child is just asking to be kicked in the teeth. Now it's time to rise up or it's time to stand down and the answer is easy to see. I'll be honest, when I read the synopsis of Pascal's story, I thought I would hate it because a backstory about a non-character smacks way too hard of a writer trying to beg for praise the way a hack artist begs for reblogs. I was mistaken because we got just enough backstory to serve the actual story. Hey look guys, it's a health of information again! Because without it, Pascal's constant anger at Rapunzel's busy schedule would have come across as bratty rather than sympathetic because we just saw his mama die and had to see him get a new mama! Stop being mean to Pascal! Everything in this episode is wonderful, with special mention to Rapunzel going full mama bear on cast when she tries to call off the search once Pascal goes missing. Like, holy shit, I'm gay and I'm listening. In one episode, Pascal went from being a funny side character to Rapunzel's precious little reptile babu, and I will forever love Pascal's story for making that happen. Pascal's story is the reason his death fake out in Queen for a Day had me blubbering like an idiot. Pretty as I'll ever be. Oh, how I debated between this or Way of the Willow, but honestly, if Way of the Willow's biggest problem is too much screen time being taken up by an unlikable and unpleasant douchebag, then Secret of the Sun Drop outplays it by having three of them. And that's before we get into all the angst. It always baffles me when a show that builds its goodwill on humor decides it's gonna start taking itself seriously, whereupon it hyperinflates the misery and angst without increasing the actual quality of the character work, so we have to suddenly conjure up a serious story with characters who were designed with humor in mind. So now that hack scientist whose stupidity is endearing has to become a villain with absolutely no self-awareness, whereupon his stupidity ceases to be endearing and starts to be V8 advertisingly annoying. And now we have to take the king seriously despite him being the worst parent Rapunzel has had out of the three. The big high moment of Secret of the Sun Drop is Cass singing, and Secret of the Sun Drop doesn't get to score points for that. Cass is Tangled's best new character, and she's always hit in the bullseye. She's like Fluttershy that way. Secret of the Sun Drop is the culmination of all of the bad decisions Tangled has made. The Black Rocks were a bad decision. Making Varian a villain was a bad decision. Making the king repeat everything Mother Gothel did but worse was a bad decision. Decision. Having a quasi-serialized plot was a bad decision. I'm sure all the insecure man-children are going, Wow, when Disney goes dark, they go dark, but fuck off. This is about as dark as a cloudless summer's day. For all my jokes about Disney turning up the edgy, the darkest thing in this episode is that Ariana and Cassandra almost get crushed to death. And as far as Disney movies go, that's the epitome of family-friendly. How many Disney villains have died from crushing? How many Disney heroes have died from crushing? Yeah, way to emulate the big climactic scenes from notoriously dark Disney movies like Hercules. It's needless grim and melodrama that fuels this bullshit, and the audience eats that up because it becomes another arrow in the quiver of arguments that animation is totally not just for kids anymore, guys. Which is not something that ever needed proving to begin with and only serves to make animated shows worse. The secret of the sun drop is the sun. Let's bring back the sun, put away the Linkin Park CDs, and take a nice trip to the emergency room. <laughs> 